Sorry about that. There we are. Um, now, it, it, this is wet, and if I want to feed it with stronger colour, uh, I, a, flat, a flat palette is great because I can now mix a good strong colour without any water at all. Just, just a damp brush. And I can go in here now and I can start to pull in. And the darker I make this, you see, the more sunlight will come on the house, you see. And uh, now all you want now, you see, is a, is a, a, a frame and a bit of string and a nail. You see, and then you, uh, you've got your, uh, you've got your, uh, your painting. Um, but you see, I'm not worried about the bricks in the wall, um, and I'm not worried about, uh, you know, uh, whether Mrs. Jones's cat is in the third window from the left. Uh, that doesn't tell me what it is. It's the shapes of tone and colour. And um, if you can get them in the right place, then um, you've got yourself a painting. So, um, but I mean, that's only done with two colours, uh, Burnt Umber and um, Windsor Blue. So... So that, that's, that's really about putting the, the picture, the, the paint on. Um, I can also, let me just clean this palette out one more. And um, the way I, I, I like to tackle things is, um, is if, if I put a, a colour on, should we say, um, um, And I have the paper wet now. I can feed it with colour, and um, so I can mix a new colour on here. Um, I thought it was going to be on the screen, but it's a. Um, I can make a colour on here about the same tone as that, and then I can pick that colour up and I can paint it. See, it doesn't run because I I just picked it up with one sweep, and I've I've got a limited amount of water in my in my um, palette and uh, perhaps if I clean again and I put another colour in and um, this is a um, drop of cobalt and I'll wring my brush out and pick up once and then that limits the amount of water in my brush and I can paint in again and you see I have um, red, yellow and blue there, which normally, if you mixed on the palette, would be black. But because I've mixed it on the paper, you get these glorious mixes of where the pigment drops in different proportions everywhere. And, and you, you get a... And once you start doing this, you, you, you'll never go backwards in, 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 in the old traditional way of painting. And, um, but you, you can literally paint like that for half an hour and, and it will not uh, destroy the... Um, the luminosity, because the if there's the surface of the paper, the pigment lands on there. Now, if you let the paper dry, it stacks on top. But painting it this way, see, it, it lands alongside, and each one lands alongside, and you've still got the same one layer of paint, uh, and you can keep it going for half an hour. And I could put a stronger one on. I mean, let's just get a, a bit of a stronger one here now. And again, if I wring out my brush and pick up once, I can put this in here and I, look, I can, it stays exactly where I left it. There we are. Now, the other tools I use are a razor blade, which I put down here, here we go. And uh, if the pigment is lying loosely on the surface, I can take it away. So I can now um, just scrape it off, you see. And so, so it, you put it on, you take it off, put it on, take it off, and um, it's um, and it gets exciting then, and um, and, it, and it, it's a worse affliction than golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I have tried golf, 
because um, I, um, I used to play golf 30 years ago and um, my last game was in Carmarthen Golf Course and um, I lost nine balls in the first seven holes. <laughs> and I picked up my bag of clubs, I threw it in the air and this is, I said, this is a stupid game. You, you're throwing a ball away and then you try to find it. <laughs> and, and I never played again. But, uh, I mean, I don't. Um, it's probably because I got a short attention span and I can't f remember where I knocked the ball. But it's, um, so um, that's the basics of it. And um, um, so I'm going to, uh, I set myself a goal years ago of um, going to, twice a year to a course to people I wanted to learn from. And, um, and uh, it's uh, certainly helped. And um, 11 years ago on my 60th birthday, um, my wife knew I, I wanted to go to America, to one of the best ones there, and um, she said, well, you're going. And <laughs> so I went to South Carolina and I learned from some of the best painters there. I, whether it rubbed off or not, I don't know, but it's, um, I certainly enjoyed it and, uh, and it turned me in a totally different direction of not being afraid of the damn thing. But uh, now for the technically minded, this is, um, this is Arsh, I think, yeah, Arsh paper. Is it Arsh? Yeah. And it's 140 pound, um, uh, like a middle grade paper and uh, on surface. And, um, and it's made of cotton, which has been primed. And um, now then I'm just going to clean this palette out and, uh, and I'm going to wet the paper to help things along. So I'm going to sponge and I'll really give it a good wetting. There we are. Nice and wet. And, uh, and now um, we'll put some, some paint on. And uh, th this is going to be a seascape. And, um, um, and I'm going to use um, a greeny blue, blue, which is um, that colour. But uh, I find it a little bit strong, so I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium scarlet with it, just to grey it off a little bit. And, um, a bit more, there we are. And we'll start putting some skies in. So, whoosh. This is with a bristle brush. And uh, see all different directions, and you, you Gradate it all out. And if you've got a blotchy sky with the uh, normal way of painting, well, there's nothing like a bristle brush to even it all out afterwards, you know, and flatten it all out. And uh, so perhaps we put something a little bit stronger on top of that, so get a little bit more blue and a little bit more red and There we are. Thin it a little bit. Oh. 